Hello everybody. I'm very excited to be here, so I want to thank Valeria Graziano and the whole CPC uh, faculty for organizing this uh, opportunity of sharing practices and uh, thoughts. So today I will speak about uh, small experiences, uh, experience a self-organized um, nursery by parents in Milan, Italy. Uh, which, uh, from my opinion, is symptomatic of a bigger issue, that is uh, how can we organize childcare uh, in a moment where the public service uh, is lacking. Of course, while together um, fighting against the privatization of all aspects of our life, but as Nick has said before in a very beautiful way, we have to act sometime. So, um, indeed the situation, which is not new from uh, um, certain perspective, but is assuming in this phase of advanced capitalism a specific characteristic, lead us to um, more and more to, to, to uh, touch on issues such as the relation between nuclear families and communities, uh, the social reproduction um, in, uh, in the age of its privatization, the rethinking of care itself within a feminist uh, um, perspective, what relations are possible between our um, needs of autonomy and uh, not always friendly institutions, and finally the possibility and also the threats um, of new digital techno devices um, has allies on struggles around the common need of uh, care provisions. This tension um, between a small uh, practice, a local experience, however positioned in a, um, uh, in a field of a great complexity, I would say, has led the project to, to become over the time a, a particularly strong and um, strong community, I would say. Firstly, because it responds to a primary need, childcare. Secondly, because it produces a continuous um, turnover of people who have had the courage to question bias around uh, um, what is perceived as good or bad when it comes to raise uh, uh, our own kids. And also the strength to question fixed gender roles and uh, stereotypes on childhood. So, this group, um, uh, I mean, uh, is training itself from dissolving the naturalized uh, link and relationship between women and care, and also is giving voice and rights, or trying to do this, to living subjects that are normally not listened at all, uh, as we adults do with uh, uh, kids or with animal, for instance, believing that they don't have anything proper to say, say not being as well as civilized as us. So monsters or strangers who need to become as soon as possible um, domesticated humans. Going ahead with the monsters topic, recently a law has been approved in Italy in order to finance the installation of closed-circuit video surveillance systems in public nursery and kindergartens, with an expenditure of about 15 million euros per year until 2024. The law says, in order to guarantee the safety of minors in the same uh, structures. However, the main discussion among legislators is about the necessity to provide an efficient security system equipped with encrypted camera in order to avoid the risk of hack attacks. Uh, and not even a discussion has been spent about uh, this apparently huge risk that um, killed children are facing in public schools um, that are leading to such a, 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 an investment of public resources. In fact, if we relate this investment on, on video surveillance systems to the cut to public schools that have been made in Italy by the last governments in the last 30 years, it's really a disproportionate uh, expenditure. For instance, the current government in the last uh, spending review, which was approved just last month, provide for a 10% cut on school education 
which goes from 48 billion to 44 within just three years, uh, mainly divesting in primary education, nursery and kindergartens, and in supporting teachers. So, CATS and surveillance methodologies are promoted instead of investing on education and giving to workers better contracts and conditions, a choice which could avoid a growing um, percentage of burnout risk due to the low wages, to the precarious working condition of thousands of teachers, and mainly of them are women, and finally, due to the great issue that these people are facing every day with a falling down education public system. Besides all this, the disinvestment in a public school, and in particular in nurseries and in kindergartens, is uh, producing, has shown on the image at the right side of the screen, less access to it, um, meaning fewer places within the public school system. Indeed, about one child out of four is cut out from the first level schools list, and a similar percentage is reflected in the latest data analysis published by the National Labour Inspectorate on the resignation of work after the first child. It goes without saying that less access to public schools goes hand in hand with a rising percentage, again here, of mainly women, that have to abandon work and to face a difficult reintegration afterwards. Moreover, uh, the worster, to worsen this, uh, how can I say, uh, hopeful scenario, the value through which access to the public service is defined were never changed since the Second World War. And what is happening now is that families with temporary contracts, uh, I mean, the majority of our generation's job conditions are excluded by public lists of NEST and kindergarten, even without having a large uh, financial resources available. In fact, it is considered that precarious life or works without office hours can allow parents to take care of children independently. So the, the concept is, you don't have a proper contract, no school for your kids. Uh, I mean, um, I know that Italian public institution can be capable of incredible irony. So the question is, are there any alternatives? Um, the alternative to public school range from enrolling into a private nursery, which uh, has very high costs, hiring a full-time babysitter and some little and complementary services offered by the administration. But for income and time organizing reasons, a large group of people, those with temporary contracts, does not find a real and sustainable alternative in these typologies. For instance, only in the city of Milan, around 2,000 families every year are looking for an alternative. Most of them will choose a private service, coming to the paradox that a single salary is used just to pay a place in a nursery. Others will choose a babysitter, but still a huge majority of them, as I said before, will see the rise of women in the housewife role again. The irony of all this situation is that more and more families nowadays are less traditional than before. But when they have to choose who will keep the best job, I mean the one, the most paid one, in a country so, still so structurally uh, against female and whatever is not a male, men will easily maintain their uh, position. Maybe this is happening also um, in other country or in more general situation. Uh, however, I think, um, I mean, the return uh, to uh, the one breadwinner model on the one hand and uh, the economic dependence on the other is not exactly what I perceive as a uh, solution. So, to sum up, um, it is within this general context that Soprasotto a self-managed uh, nursery by parents was born. 
a project for the care of the smallest, born among parents who have in common a completely transformed work context compared to the previous generations. In fact, many families who have gone through the project, whether they are couples or single parents, heterosexual or homosexual from Milan or just arrived, find themselves facing economic precariousness. Uh, moreover, current jobs with their unpredictable uh, working hours and uh, with their typical contracts have generated new needs among this family that cannot be fully satisfied by the uh, public model of care of the early childhood. In fact, these models are organized, as I was saying before, around the conception of work that today no longer represents the majority, at least in cities such as Milan. Besides, uh, the privatization of care, meaning the reorganization of welfare services, is leaving a great deal of room for uh, various religious organizations that require people to uh, renounce their self-determination in order to um, adhere to specific values and behavioral standards, excluding those who do not adapt. So, for these reasons, in uh, 2012, among parents who attend the same neighborhood, raised the idea to uh, invent and co-organize a space that could answer to these new needs. So how to cooperate so that a permanent workshop for kids could become a safe and lively uh, place in relationship with the surrounding uh, neighborhood. Sopra Sotto, which is the project I'm speaking about, was born in 2013. And since the beginning, we were quite openly promoting the, the fact that we were a pirate um, nursery. Not in the sense that we were out of law or using grey area of the law, but in the sense that Professor Gary Hall um, told this morning, like more in like to make an attempt to try a solution to, 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 to test. So, it's then not so difficult to understand how this project was developed between a very concrete need and the lack of public services. However, I have to say that the participation of people in, operation, in its operation, in its organization, has created a sociality that goes beyond the project itself and contributes to a greater cooperation between people. So, to sum up, I can say that Soprasotto is a space that has been designed specifically for kids, but especially for adults, because the collective processes of taking care for children in the, the, the cultivation of the social reproduction has led the community to face a wider reflection on society and its form of organizations. In fact, the ambition to hold together the transformation of work, the changing role within the family, new forms of social relation and cooperation within a profound crisis of the welfare system, and the local context understood as a network of social resources, um, has positioned life at the center of every possible argumentation within the community, giving the possibility of the emergence of a dimension of collective care as a starting point for the design of a sustainability that is not longer individual and insufficient, but inscribed within a feminist economy of relationship whose shared priority is to inspire to a more livable life. So, social reproduction here um, emancipate from a, a female destiny and starts occupying a space that affects the whole society, from the shared care of children through the weaving of new networks of social resources, it becomes in a strong phase of extractive capitalism, both the place of cooperation and the very possibility of reconstruction of new grassroots forms of welfare. So reproduction labor here try to escape from a private dimension and move towards a wider assumption of responsibility. And this is not give, only giving the possibility to, um, of new forms of parently, 
of parenting, more freer from a, a patriarchal form of relations with power, but also contributing to the transformation of public spaces into places where the uh, ethics of consumption without limits is slowly reduced. Thus, collective care becomes a generative uh, practice of social form that are truly worth re reproducing. As Silvia Federici states, social reproduction is a problematic context, but together the same place where rebellion can be produced, where alternative can be born. So I will quickly go through some um, the specificity of, of the project. So the main one is self-organization, so through monthly meeting, daily organizational chat rooms and some other basic digital devices. Uh, parents coordinate all the um, aspects of the, of, the, of, the, of the kindergarten, from the bureaucracy to economic administration, passing through ordinary management, maintenance of the space and stocks. So this means that there is no service figures, rather interchangeable role that ensure all the aspects. Only two teachers have a fixed role and of course a salary. The second uh, specificity is oh, image. Uh, the idea of an open space. So um, the modularity of, uh, of the didactic provide more flexibility between people who do not have actually office time uh, hours. So it's for this reason that the space is, uh, is con conceived as an, open, uh, as an open space. Parents, friends, uh, citizens, in fact, if we should, uh, are integral part of the everyday environment. For example, a mother who wants to, uh, to breathe feeding during the day or someone with free time who wants to develop a specific thematic workshop. If in agreement with, uh, with the assembly, has the opportunity to do so in this space. The, uh, we have a problem with, okay. The, the idea of the neighborhood has uh, into the school and, and the school into the neighborhood. I mean, this project is itself a strong relationship within the neighborhoods, informal association or groups, or, um, um, with which we share um, um, part of the daily times and, 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 the, and the construction of different type of projects. We have a common garden where the kids uh, during hot season stay. We have, but also we go to market, to, to library, to shops, to artisans. So it seems that the collective care of children somehow has become um, contagious. And over the years, Soprasotto has become a central reality for the people of the district that offer um, hospitality, uh, knowledge, activities, and also help and time. The last specificity is also, even it seems less important, but I do not believe so, it's the idea that food is important, so um, uh, it, the nutrition aspects are, uh, are thought as an important moment of the journey of the, of the kids, so we, we, we select the raw material with them, um, um, within this farmer cooperative of the area and then we do the preparation together. Parents share tips and recipes in order to guarantee uh, a, a healthy relationship with uh, not junky food. Um, so, I, I believe that this project was, um, has, has worked in this year for its territorial dimension giving the possibility to more than 60 families to experience themselves and their kids' life differently, for at least for a couple of years. Um, but since we, we opened the project, we receive a lot of uh, uh, requests and mail asking uh, to, to somehow summarize how we did this, uh, uh, we, this, this project. And so um, we decide to write a a, a bit ironically, to write a, a manual how to open a, a pirate kindergarten in your neighborhood. Um, however, 
we do not believe in scaling projects, rather on the concept of non-scaling institutions as a pluralistic and multipolarity network, community to be with, not autarchic ones, neither one model to rule em, them all. In fact, community is conflict. None of, uh, has the same comprehension of the commons or of collective changeable needs. We are all conflictual and contradictory. However, we have decided to write these manuals. And um, I think that the main desire is to uh, somehow, uh, that this, that, uh, to be useful uh, uh, to whoever wants to undertake a similar experience, not as a model, but as a first step. And uh, um, finally, can be a good way for people from abroad to have a quick overview on the Italian situation. Um, the manual is, div is divided in sections. The first three are dedicated to uh, the form of se self-organization that we have established in our practices, from management, legal entity, the economic procedures adopted during these years, and the online and offline tools, digital tools that we use. And finally, the hottest topic, the relations that we have undertaken with the um, institutional context, with the administration, the city council, and so on. Uh, the fourth section is, uh, with, is about the design of the space, um, so which furniture is useful to have and the reason of its design. In the manual there are links to open source files designed with the collaboration of uh, We Make, a make a space in Milano um, Zoe told about before. And, uh, and they are ready to be reproduced and modified according to other necessities and needs in collaboration with other makerspace of our labs. So, in the fifth section, we explore how this experience of collective care impacts on life of children. We ask ourselves, what are we transmitting to them and what they are transmitting to us in, uh, within this practice? For instance, how the, cons the idea of an open space instead of closed wall and doors, uh, the community-based form of caring to each other and the, organize and the organizing um, through assembly are affecting the whole community in which kids are part of. In the, in the sixth section, we have uh, collaborated with uh, um, um, some people that are um, writing and thinking about topics that we feel uh, very close to. So we have an article on open source by Zoe Romano, an article on pirate care of Valeria Graziano, and then some other uh, papers collected. Finally, um, in the last section, there is an overview of some past experiences that, have, uh, that we have uh, um, studied and analyzed uh, during this year. I will talk about, I will just cite the uh, Asilo di Porta di Cinese, which is the one on the right side, and is a small feminist experiment opened in uh, Milan during the 70s which was born out from a, a group research on the non-authoritarian pedagogy and that lasts four years. So the result of this experience were collected on uh, um, this book which is called L'Erba Voglio, uh, Practices in the School. And um, the book is a collection of tests and talk from teachers, students, workers, um, parents also, and it's still today, I think, one of the greatest ethnographic research on political pioneer teachers who start practicing different models of education within uh, the institution and also without, without the institution, also because they were fired one by one. When I, when I uh, refer to different models of, edu of education, I mean they start talking with their students. They start breaking the relation uh, the authoritarian relation between uh, teacher and students. For instance, Lea Melandri, um, an Italian feminist very active in this uh, mo movement and a great theorist, uh, she was fired uh, uh, on charge of sexually harassment, harassing her student, and this is because she was the first bringing inside her classes I mean, among teenagers, uh, topics as, uh, such as life, uh, sex, conflict, money, love, through practicing autocoscienza, which uh, in those years was a very strong feminist methodology. 
Uh, in conclusion, also um, throughout these uh, genealogies, uh, what seems to me is that um, form of collectivization of social reproduction labor uh, are um, a response not only to the social division of labor, but also to the sexual division of it. In fact, a mutual solidarity between those who are on the one side of this sexual division of labor and the other can turn into experimentation. And uh, uh, I mean, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an attempt of a new way of being together, which is not only possible, but I think now necessary. Uh, last but not least, the, um, I think that mutual has become a practice of human relationship based on mutual care, as we see in this uh, experiment. Caring for the other that becomes a, 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 a kind of a, a self-caring practice. So a collective subject training to escape from violence on the one hand and to a rising phenomenon of uh, criminalization on the other. In fact, it would be very interesting to talk with administration about, for instance, about this project, about the idea of fair, about the, what is illegal. Um, but this space of discussion between citizens and politics, uh, practices of care, grassroots practices of care and administrator, um, I mean a space of a more complex and articulated reading of the problem is totally, is a completely absent. Instead, we have received cops and public health officials trying to find whatever uh, way to, to close the project. And maybe this is one, also one of the reasons why this experience of uh, collective care uh, after some year um, fail. So, to, 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 to conclude, uh, um, John Jordan wrote that uh, Radical ethic of care is a condition of existence of a political community. Uh, Firestone argued that without the means of reproduction, those of production can only automate inequality, and today we can see in an increasingly accelerated way. Uh, also, devour the remaining resources and centralize the value. In the 70s, claiming for a wage against domestic work was a symbolic gesture capable to denaturalize uh, this sphere. Finally, in this last year, the social reproductive strike by the transnational feminist movement in Una Menos seems a way to put social reproduction back at the center, not just for the necessity to, um, of its visibility, albeit still necessary, but also for its transformative possibilities, both between human relations and between human and more than humans one. Thank you.